In this segment, we're going to talk about uh, what uh, are the steps in solving engineering problems. So this is part of the introduction to numerical methods, because numerical methods are basically going to be used by you as an engineer or a scientist to be able to solve a problem. So let's look at a look at a uh, example here. Uh, so first, let's let's go and look at what the steps of solving an engineering problem are. The first thing that you have to do is that you have to describe the problem itself. That's the first thing which you have to do. So because if you don't know how to describe the problem, you won't be able to solve it. So that's very important that uh, somebody is giving you a problem that you need to first write a description of it, what it is and what we are looking for. Then what you, what you may do is you might develop a mathematical model for it. And some people might say, argue that, hey, you have to develop an experimental model for it. There's nothing wrong with that. It all depends on what kind of approach you are taking to solve the problem. So you may either have to develop a mathematical model or an experimental model to be able to do that. Eventually, even the experimental model has to be, uh, you have to use some mathematical model to be able to solve the problem or to be able to present the problem. Once you have the mathematical model, so we are restricting our attention to our numerical methods, uh, what we're going to use numerical methods, then you want to solve the problem. So you have to solve the mathematical model. Now, the solution might involve analytical means, numerical means, or maybe using some kind of a package, uh, a package program. And once you have solved the mathematical model, what you have to do is you have to use the solution. Many times people, students think that they, once they have solved the mathematical model, they are done. But that doesn't make any, that, that, that's not going to solve, that's not what your um, employer or, uh, or anybody else is looking for. They are not looking for just for the solution of the mathematical model, but also that you will implement that solution uh, so that the problem can be, problem is solved. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this might seem to be uh, very descriptive of what I'm trying to tell you, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a real life example and show you these four, um, uh, four steps of solving an engineering problem. So here what you are seeing is a picture of a bascule bridge uh, up in St. Augustine. And as you can see here is that the bascule bridge is simply like a first class level. So you have a falcon right here and uh, what you have is like a seesaw. In fact, uh, the word bascule comes from a French word uh, called bascule, and it means just seesaw. So basically what, what is happening is that it is opening the bridge. So when you have a counterweight here, so you have a counterweight here, and it just uh, opens the bridge, and you let the counterweight go and basically closes the bridge. So what does that to do with an engineering problem is as follows, that um, um, this is uh, when a bascule bridge is being assembled uh, together. So this is a bascule bridge which is over our own uh, Hillsborough County uh, uh, River Bridge in Tampa, Florida. And when they were building it, uh, we took a picture of it. Uh, and what I want you to concentrate is on this part right here, which is the, uh, which is the fulcrum itself. So that's your fulcrum. And when we say bascule bridge TAG, TAG is what we, what we mean by uh, T, is, uh, T is the trunnion, uh, H stands for hub, and G stands for uh, the girder. So you have a trunnion hub and a girder assembly which makes the fulcrum of the bridge. And once we take a closer picture of uh, this, uh, it'll be more evident what we mean by that, is as follows, that if you take a closer picture of here, this is what you are seeing here. That's the trunnion. This part is a, it's a hollow steel shaft which can be, in this case, is about a foot in diameter. And this is the hub, and the hub is attached to the girder of the bridge on which you put the, on which you want to put the span of the bridge. So this is, that's why it's called a trunnion hub girder assembly because you have a trunnion, you've got a hub, and you've got a girder in which it's being assembled. Now, uh, the way it is assembled is that what you do is you take this trunnion, for example, and you cool it down so as, so as to shrink fit into the hub here. So that's the first part of the assembly which you do. You take the trunnion, it's a separate part, it's a steel, hollow steel shaft, you will put it into a, a liquid medium such as dry and alcohol or in um, a liquid nitrogen, let's suppose, and then what you're going to do is you're going to, since it shrinks, then you can shrink fit into the, into the hub itself, which is, which is this part here. Uh, let, let's go through that uh, and see that how that works. So this, these are the steps which, which are used to be able to make this trunnion hub girder assembly. So you have, uh, this, is, this is the girder. Uh, this is the hub and this is the trunnion. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this trunnion here and you're going to um, uh, immerse it in some kind of uh, liquid such as dry, uh, such as a cooling medium such as dry ice and alcohol or liquid nitrogen and you're going to cool it down. Once it cools down, the, the diameter contracts and you're going to put it into the hub and that's what results in the assembly here. 
Now, what happens then is that in order to be able to put it in the girder, which is, uh, which is this part right here, in order to be able to put it in that girder, uh, what you have to do is you have to take now this trunnion hub assembly. The trunnion and the hub, which are together, you're going to take that, put it into liquid nitrogen or, or, or dry and alcohol mixture, and uh, cool it down so that the hub now goes into the girder and results in the assembly called the trunnion hub girder assembly, as you are seeing in the bridge right there. So, so what, what's the problem? That's what we want to be able to see. Uh, the problem is right here that on one of the bridges what happened was that as you were uh, trying to put the, tr as you had cooled down the trunnion and you tried to put it into the hub, it got stuck. Uh, luckily in this case uh, they were able to uh, st uh, take it out before it got uh, stuck for good. Now what, what can happen is that if, uh, if it would have gotten stuck and the trunnion could not have been taken out, it, it would have cost about $50,000 to get a new one plus uh, maybe a month of delay. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the construction because one has to make a new one and be able to uh, reassemble it. Uh, so why did it get stuck? Let's go and see that why did it get stuck. Now the magnitude, according to the specifications, uh, uh, there are some specifications based on something called FN2 and FN3 fit. Uh, we needed a contraction of 0 0.015 inches. So that's the amount of contraction which was required to be able to have in the trunnion. Uh, before it was put into the hub there. So the question arose is that, hey, let's go and uh, see that, whether we did get this contraction of 0 0.015 inches before it was put in the hub. Maybe that's why it got stuck, because we didn't have enough uh, contraction. So, uh, so some calculations were done. So uh, some calculations were done right here is that, let's go and uh, use our physics formula here to calculate the amount of contraction which, has, uh, which will take place. So the contraction diameter is simply given by the diameter of the trunnion, which is uh, this part here, the diameter of the trunnion, which is uh, uh, here, and then multiplied by the thermal expansion coefficient of steel, multiplied by the temperature change delta T. So what uh, they were able to do is that the diameter was about a foot, as I was telling you, it's about a foot in, in some medium-sized bridges. And then alpha we took from the handbook for steel at uh, room temperature. And then we took delta T. The delta T is the difference between the temperature which you have at room temperature, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, let's suppose. And minus 108 is the temperature of dry as an alcohol mixture. So the delta T difference which you are getting is minus 188. So that, because that is the change in temperature which is taking place. So just simply plugging into this simple equation, it's pretty harmless. You get uh, diameter times alpha times uh, delta T. And that's what you get as the contraction. Now, as you're seeing here, that the contraction is more than 0 0.015 inches as required by specifications. So, the, and so people thought, the consultants thought that, hey, there was nothing wrong with uh, the amount of contraction which we got because, all, uh, because this, uh, these calculations are telling us that we should have gotten a contraction of 0 0.015 inches or more as required by the specifications. And some people thought that maybe it was not allowed to be cooled enough when you immersed in dry and alcohol mixture that was not allowed to be there to reach steady state, and that's why it got stuck. Let's go and see whether that's really true.